thanks for coming. And I'm excited to talk to you about this today. First of all, welcome to New Dimensions Physical Therapy. So this is our office where we practice physical therapy. And then the other thing that's going on is the Steiner Institute, which is a, a business entity from which we teach and we lead retreats and we lead healing intensives. We do retreats in Hawaii and Costa Rica. And what we do there is um, teach lay people who are not professionals um, techniques for self-healing because that's ultimately what our goal is, is to help people learn how to take care of themselves and to help themselves heal. And we all have that wisdom within ourselves. And that's, that's fundamental to this approach is learning to listen to the wisdom within our patients or our clients to guide us in the treatment session. Okay. So, um, I'm Rebecca Steiner, and I've been practicing physical therapy forever, and I used to teach physical therapists a lot, like teach continuing education courses to PTs before I had kids, and then once I had kids, it was just too much. So now that my children are grown, i am been teaching again, and so we actually have faculty at the Steiner Institute. There are three physical therapists that have been training with me for eight years. One's from California, one's from South Carolina, and one is from Tulsa, Oklahoma and they are ready to start teaching. And so we're going to be teaching this program in Austin, Texas, probably starting in August or September, and it's also going to be taught in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So there will be those two opportunities to take the same class in either location. So if one weekend didn't work for someone, they could do a different weekend. So what is the Steiner Method? So I did not invent what I teach. I'm a really good integrator. So I had amazing teachers. I've had amazing teachers in my career and I've been a voracious learner. And actually one of my teachers was Joe. Joe Vasquez, you were. And so he's a podorthodist who works here at New Dimensions and he specializes in making orthotics. And he and the gentleman that he worked with for many years, Greg Wolf, taught me a lot about the foot and ankle. And, um, and so I've been very, very blessed to have like good teachers in all different areas. And that's what's all coming together. And I'm ready to share with anyone who has a license to touch other people, to teach exercises to other people. So it doesn't just have to be physical therapists and physicians and chiropractors. It can also be massage therapists and personal trainers can have access to this information too. So yeah, it's open to any, it just takes a curious mind and a hunger to learn. And kind of as hungry as you are, I think we can keep feeding you information. So I wanna give you an overall picture of what the Steiner Method is, kind of in a, in a big picture, and then talk about the two classes that are gonna start out. So I think a, a great way of thinking about this, I kind of think about it like the sun almost, because truly working with people with precision and in a way that honors the wisdom in their body is life activating. So I'm just going to put that this method is life activating. And you'll see that over and over through things. And the two legs that this method stands on is body work. And we call that bio activation. So bio means life. So life activation through body work. And then there's movement. So I'm going to put movement here. And that is called, the method that we use is bioactive myomechanics. Then we have bioactive healing. And that is something that is taught in the advanced courses and is also taught in retreats to anyone who wants to learn. And then there is muscle activation that is called bioactive diagnostic manual muscle testing. So we use muscles um, to test and find out things about the body and about the system and where to go and what to do. And we also test every single division of every single muscle. So the hamstring is broken into six divisions. The gastroc is, we look at it as a group muscle, and we look at it as a lateral gastroc and the medial gastroc. The posterior tib has a supernator division and a, a completely separate division. So a lot of muscles are divided up into their parts, and that leads us into um, 
a lot, a lot deeper into the body. So I'll just leave it at that for now. But there's a lot of times when people cannot access muscles. So in other words, if you ask, ask them to actively contract a muscle and you resist them, it will present as if it's weak and it's really not weak. It's just that the circuit is blown from the brain to the muscle. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's start out with talking about these two things because this is sort of geared toward massage therapists and this is sort of geared toward personal trainers. Also movement for personal trainers and then of course physical therapists, athletic trainers, chiropractors, physicians, it's all appropriate for. So I want to talk a little bit about what bioactivation is and what bioactive biomechanics is. So with bioactivation, we divide the body into the lower core, the middle core, and the upper core. And then what we do is we go through the body. As a matter of fact, instead of listening to me talk, grab this brochure. Do each of you guys have one? And let's let you guys read what the definition is yourself. So right there, the very top. And actually, um, if you don't mind, Violet, just actually reading the first sentence right there out loud. And then Jonah, you take the next sentence. And Joe, you take the next sentence. Okay. This course teaches bioactivation techniques and principles applied to the lower core. Bioactivation is a manual therapy method that reduces pain and restores balance and ease of movement. This method achieves this by restoring joint and myofascial mobility and stability throughout the musculoskeletal system. Jeff? Bioactivation addresses biomechanical, physiological, and psychological mechanisms involved in the organization of human movement. <clears throat> Bioactivation is a multidimensional approach that is effective at preventing, discerning, and treating underlying reasons why injuries present or will not heal. It achieves this by unraveling adaptations in the body. Because the methodology addresses the body in person as a, and person as a whole, the changes are integrated and lasting. Okay, awesome. And so when we talk about adaptation patterns, the first thing that we want to understand is that the body adapts quicker than it heals. So if we have an ankle sprain, we keep walking. We just limp, right? And so what we want to do is bring the body back into neutral alignment and bring it help to restore normal mobility and stability at every single joint from the foot all the way up the chain. And so the first class works on focusing on the foot and ankle. And so all the joints in the foot and ankle are addressed, and then the knee, and then the hip, and then the pelvis. And so what, what we do to begin with is make sure that the person has normal arthrokinematics. And so that's determined by the shape of the joint. So if it's a convex surface on a concave surface, it moves a specific way versus if a convex surface moves on a concave surface. So you have to really begin to learn about the, the anatomy of every single joint and how it relates to other joints and then how the foot function affects the ankle function, how the ankle function affects the knee function, how the knee function affects the hip and the pelvis. So it's always bringing everything back to the whole right? And so if a joint isn't moving like it should, why isn't it? It can be because a bone is out of place. It can be because there are soft tissue restrictions right at the joint or at another joint that's close to this joint or at another area of the body that's far, far away from that. And so this method teaches you how to discern where is the restriction that's causing joint limitation right here. It can be right here at this joint or it can be somewhere else in the body. And then you want to make sure that the joint can be stable with various movement patterns. So we go through every single joint and make sure that it can accomplish good mobility through the full range of motion and stability with functional movement patterns. And we do manual therapy to restore that. Okay, and so then there's the middle core, and the middle core goes from the 
base of the pelvis to the clavicles. And so a big part of that is breath and the rib cage and the diaphragm and the function of how the diaphragm works in response to the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor and the diaphragm work together all the time unless something's out of alignment. And a lot of people have postural dysfunctions where they sit at a desk all day and they're rounded forward. And so then they have to pick themselves up like this to stand up straight. Well, that alters the position of their diaphragm and that changes how they breathe and that changes how their pelvic floor functions. And that can cause hip pain, knee pain, and foot and ankle pain. The position of your diaphragm can cause hip pain, knee pain, and foot and ankle pain. So everything affects everything potentially. And so since there's so many joints between here and here, we do break it up into the middle core, lower core, and then the upper core is the clavicle, the shoulder girdle, and the TMJ joint, and the cranium. And so when you think about the cranium, there's all the sutures in the cranium and they all move and they need to have normal resiliency relative to each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that's bioactivation. So bioactivation is the, is the body work. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a demonstration for you guys because I think to watch this is so much easier than just kind of listening to it. And then bioactive myomechanics is this. So let me pass this out. So here and here, okay. So let's go through and read this. If you want to start, Violet, the first sentence. Bioactive myomechanics is a method of analyzing and re-educating musculoskeletal movement that specifically identifies the intrinsic nature of neuromotor recruitment in order to achieve optimal biomechanics. Wow, that's a mouthful, <laughs> yeah? Okay, so bioactive myomechanics analyzes and re-educates movement by identifying the deep intrinsic nature of neuromotor recruitment. So I think something that's commonly done is we look at biomechanics and we look at how the body moves from a distance and we look at how it's aligned from a distance and we watch at how it's aligned as someone runs. And so we watch how forces move through it and we watch how ground reaction force moves through the body. We look how gravity affects the body. We look at we look at um, their base of support, how their foot is aligned with their knee. So that's kind of an extrinsic, a big perspective. What's not done a lot and what's missed is what's going on deep within the body. And that's where you actually have to kind of put your hands on the body to feel what happens. And I've had a lot of patients come in who look fabulous and they're in a lot of pain. I think of one guy in particular who did his exercise program religiously. He came into the office, he stood perfectly, he squatted perfectly, but the muscles he chose to use were not in a cooperative pattern and sharing the, man, the demand throughout the body. So he was 100% using his back. The way he initiated the movement, which muscles he chose to initiate the movement with, determined everything. So that's like a deep intrinsic perspective of looking at what muscles are firing in a given movement pattern. And you can't tell that sometimes by just watching someone move from a distance. Oftentimes you have to break down the movement and start to analyze components of the movement and see where things are breaking down and why this person's having pain. Does that make sense? And so in bioactive myomechanics, we break a sports movement down, like let's say swimming into components. So swimming requires your body to be able to rotate, right? and keep everything in alignment. And so that would be one component of swimming. You have to have full range of motion of your arm. Your arm has to be able to move through a certain pattern. You have to be able to stabilize your pelvis and move your legs, right? So you could chop it up into components and start looking at those components and making sure that they're accurate, that they're accurate in alignment, that they're accurate in their quality of movement, and that they're accurate and the muscles that people are using to make them move. And so it's a deep analysis of the intrinsic nature. That's why it says it's a method of analyzing and re-educating musculoskeletal movement that specifically identifies the intrinsic nature of neuromotor recruitment in order to achieve optimal myomechanics. 
Now, does that make sense after you heard me talk? <laughs> yeah. yeah. At first, it's just like a bunch of words. Okay. This approach teaches principles of biomechanics and how to incorporate them into musculoskeletal movement from an extrinsic and intrinsic perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's really been cool to look at the body in this way because this is how um, people get missed by the medical community for sure in terms of it's like, gosh, you look good, or they get trained and get piled more weight on when they're not actually using the best sequence of muscle firing patterns in their body. So that's what this takes a complex movement like running, um, golf, a swing, anything, and breaking it down into its components. And then it's elements. An element comes all the way down to one joint, which kind of takes us back to bioactivation. So in bioactivation, we do manual therapy to restore accurate motion, accurate alignment, accurate stability in each individual joint so that it can come together in a component of movement and then come together in a complex movement pattern. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's just breaking things down and breaking things down and breaking things down. And so this takes information that's been out in scientific literature forever, like the arthrokinematics, the way that each joint moves in relationship to itself and to other joints and puts it into a clinical setting, it kind of merges science and art, actually. So it's the art of how to take all these scientific principles, these physics principles, and bring them together so that you can really be scientific in how you analyze the body. And it's like every session is like a research project. We actually start with a pretest that's uniquely designed for that person. So one person hurts when they sit, one person hurts when they stand, one person hurts when they run. So they have different different criteria that's important to them that we need to help them with, right? And some people don't hurt at all. And that's what thing that's unique about this system is it's not based on pathology. It's not based on this is how you treat plantar fasciitis. This is how you treat rotator cuff tendonitis. This is how you treat a disc injury. It's, it's not based on pathology. And that's pretty much how I was always trained as a physical therapist. It's actually based on wellness and optimization of the body. So it's going through each joint and asking the body, is this moving right? Is this aligned right? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And going through the whole system like that. So I have a lot of patients that come in, they're like, I feel great. And I'm like, good, let's get to work. And so we search for anything that's not in alignment, not moving well, muscles that aren't activated so that they can go, somebody I just treated is getting ready to go on a climbing trip. So he's gonna go on a climbing trip for five days and we made sure every single muscle's working, that his alignment's good, that he's not gonna hurt when he's hiking, he's not gonna get injured unless he has some kind of unusual impact or something happen. But it's not because his body was set up for an injury. A lot of injuries happen because people are set up for them. They go hiking and then one knee hurts. Well, both legs walk the same distance. Why does one knee hurt? There was something that predisposed that person when they went hiking to that injury. And so we can help prevent that if we really have an understanding of the body's inherent optimal alignment, mobility, and ability to stabilize and recruit muscles in order to do that. And so it's a very um, microscopic view macroscopic view. You keep kind of going in, coming out, going in, coming out, looking at one little joint and then coming back and looking at the whole body and how does changing that joint impact the rest of the system. And what's been amazing to these clinicians that have we've been working together is how a seemingly, oh, Jonakai, for example, he, we found out in evaluating him that in his knee, he did not have internal rotation of his femur on his tibia. It didn't internally rotate well at all. He was limited in that. And so actually it was your tibia on your femur. It wouldn't internally rotate all the way. Yeah, so he was really stuck, but then he would move this way. And then we also had another list of findings like his hip 
would not extend all the way. It was super, super tight. We see that in a lot of people. And there were several other findings I don't recall right now. But what we found is when we restored motion to this joint, everything else changed. His hip had full mobility and extension. How did changing range of motion in this one little bitty joint change his hip and change his cranium? That's what it was. Yeah. It was some of your, what, do you remember what it was? Well, there was stuff going on in my scapula where I don't think I could, um, I could like properly depress them. Mm -hmm. It was like really, really raised and uh, it was elevated, medially rotated. And there was, so the alignment of your shoulder girdle was off. And then you had a restriction in your cranium. I remember that too, yes. one of your cranial sutures. Yes. And as soon as this motion was challenged or restored, the cranial fault changed, mm -hmm. the shoulder girdle alignment dysfunction changed, the hip mobility changed just from addressing this. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how do you quickly go through the body and scan it? Test, 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 test. And then how do you find out what is the primary dysfunction that's driving everything else in the system, if in fact there is one primary thing. And oftentimes there is, or there's something that's more influential than other, other areas. Do you know what I'm saying? So that kind of goes back to this microscopic view of knowing what each joint is responsible for and then seeing how that area affects the whole. Okay, so since we broke this manual therapy practice up into three parts, the lower core, the middle core, and the upper core, there are three classes. Same thing with bioactive myomechanics, lower core, middle core, upper core, three classes. So there are six classes that are basically fundamental to this method. And so what should you do? It depends on how curious you are. You know, take one class and be like, oh, that was cool. Yeah, I want to do another one. Or that was enough. I'm going to take that and run with it, integrate that into my practice. That is enough information for me, you know? And some people are like, oh my gosh, you're just starting to, to bring things together for me. It's like, I know for me, it's like, I always knew the system was interrelated, but none of my classes taught that. We had a foot and ankle course. We had a knee course. We had a hip course, but nobody was like, well, how does the foot affect the sphenoid? How does the, um, pelvic floor affect the diaphragm or the, or the, um, tentorium cerebelli, you know? So, um, those were questions I always had because you can treat someone locally and their body may or may not change. But when you can treat it in respect to the whole, you get lasting. You remember that first thing we read, you get lasting changes that change people's gives them their life back. You know, sometimes just in two sessions, you know, um, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's amazing. So anyway, there's so much to say about what goes into this. So these are advanced classes and these are options of moving forward with this whole system. If someone would want to, um, and these are the fundamental classes that serve as the foundation for moving forward. And so I would be so happy to kind of do a demonstration if someone wants to see kind of what this all looks like. Okay. I'll be your guinea pig. Okay, you'll be my guinea pig. So what would we look at with you? Um, and you know, it's, it's like the first class is like you guys have a brochure is on the lower core. Yeah. Your issue doesn't have to be a lower core issue because this treats the whole body. Okay. Yeah, so don't feel like you're limited to that. So if you really have something that bothers you, um, you can bring it up and we can look at it because that's the thing. This is a system that applies to every area of the body that applies to every single person and their unique needs. So every joint, every area region of the body is so different than another, but this system, once you learn it, you just keep applying it to each area, to each area to each person, to each person. And it honors the uniqueness of every area of the body and the uniqueness of each person. And that's why we get the question a lot from people who come in, they've been to a lot of other clinics or things like that. And they're like, why is this not written up in the literature? Why do people not know about this? Why? And it's really because in our model, N equals one. 
So to have statistical significance, you need to have a really large N. You need to have a lot of lateral ankle sprains to do a research study on it. You need to have a lot of herniated discs that are all herniated the same way. Well, the problem is everybody with a herniated disc is different. So if you're really honoring the uniqueness of each person, it, it, it blows the study out of the water because there's too many variables, way too many variables. Has this person got an amputation? Have they been in a car accident? Are they holding trauma in their body? Are they frightened? You know, it's like every nervous system is unique. And we are treating the nervous system and the whole being, not just the physical body. So that's why it's not written up in the literature. And that's why there's not a scientific study on it, because it's impossible to put everybody in the same box. Yeah. But the method is scientific and research is done every time a patient is seen. We take objective measures. We do a pretest. We do a post test to always make sure we're moving in the right direction. And we retest as we work to make sure did this make a positive change or not? And we're going through an investigative process with the person who we're working with. You know, and they get to watch in the mirror. They get to see the difference in their body. They get to feel the difference in their body. And we're asking them, what do you notice? What do you notice? What do you not notice? Are we going the right way? Or are we not going the right way? Because it's an algorithm that we just keep working through, right? And so it's very scientific, but again, N equals one in this method. Yeah. <laughs>